Hey, David, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Seth? I'm doing very well. Uh, congrats on your new show. I'm very jealous. I feel like for a long time, my dream was to uh, shoot a comedy in England, and that's exactly what you got to do. Yeah, I'm, I feel really, really blessed, actually. It's a lot of fun to work in, in the UK. Yeah. And you, how, did you know the, um, the creator of this show? How did you get involved in the first place? Yeah, uh, he's a buddy of mine, Nick Muhammad. Um, you know, he and uh, this other writer and actor, uh, Julia Davis, had created a show that they were thinking about adding an American character to. This was a couple of years ago. So I went out to London to do about a week of improv with them um, and just kind of find that character and find who this guy would be. And we discovered a really fun dynamic uh, between Nick and I of kind of a, a difference in status and power. And I guess Nick really loved that dynamic and we had such a good time working together that about a year later, he just emailed me this idea. And um, I just thought it was, I was just so tickled by the idea of a workplace comedy set in the high stakes world of national security and cyber terrorism uh, that, uh, I, and, and this guy who's such a pompous American blowhard. I just thought it was a really fun opportunity, so. It does seem like a character that you sink your teeth into. Did you know from the like early creation of the character or the fact that it was this workplace intelligence comedy that you wanted to be the brash sort of blowhardy American character? That's kind of who he was from the offset. And we, um, we worked on it then together for about a year, year and a half, trying to, find, trying to find this guy who to me is inspired from a lot of men in power in, <laughs> in our, yeah. in our in our country and probably his. Um, uh, this, you know, this um, mostly ignorant narcissist uh, and um, uh, casually, casually uh, sexist and uh, racist and homophobic and, and very patriotic, mostly because he's never been out of the United States in his life. <laughs> right. Uh, were you, I, I, you know, obviously uh, we both have backgrounds uh, as improvisers, but I, you know, I haven't done it for so long. I think I would be a little terrified if somebody said, hey, let's go, let's improvise. Did you, was it all, did, did it all come back to you or was it scary? It was, it wasn't scary, but I, um, you know, I, I, th I know your background of, of improv and Boom Chicago and everything, um, but um you know, I, I learned early on from when I was in an improv group with Colbert that I, he just outclassed me, you know, so I, I kind of approach it um, when I'm in, I think it's a little, I approach it more like an actor in character, as long as I've got a really solid character and um, kind of an idea of what the scene's about, I feel permission to improv and Nick is so good. Um, he's, he's as good as you and Colbert at it. Um, so. Um, I feel like he he carried me pretty much. So <laughs> you uh, so you brought up Colbert. Now I need to say it. Uh, Colbert, uh, you, myself, our other guest tonight, Robin Thede, all graduates of Northwestern University. I know yeah. I've talked about it before. You spoke at my graduation, and I, I know that's like a, there's a good and bad to that because one, I, I feel like um, I'm age shaming you, but two, you well, gave the well, best commencement speech, Thanks. the best commencement speech I've ever. I mean, I haven't heard that many, but. It was outstanding. Uh, oh, and then, so right out of college, uh, did you, I know Looking Glass was your theater company in Chicago. Was that right out of college that you started that? Yeah, we started upon graduation, actually, from Northwestern, maybe because we just didn't want, we were too scared to enter <laughs> the real world. But you know, <laughs> we, we really were hungry and determined to, to start our own company. We had been directing each other in, uh, throughout you know, our years at Northwestern. And then I started to bounce back between auditioning for TV and film in LA and commuting to Chicago. So I go back and forth to do theater in Chicago with my company and, and try, to, try to climb the, um, you know, the, the Hollywood you know, rungs, as it were, the ladder to, to try to eke out a career in TV and film as well. So. Uh, it's funny, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I think, like everybody in that cast, you came to prominence on Friends. I did not realize though you were on another iconic show. I did not realize till today that you were on uh, The Wonder Years. Oh yeah. Uh, and based on this photo, a very different uh, character than Ross. I was playing like this, this kind of hippie 
not a hippie, but more like a wandering construction kind of guy and um, <laughs> who fell in love with Olivia Diabo's character, you know, uh, uh, the sister. Um, and that was like my first introduction to TV, really. I mean, that was my first real break. And um, I can tell you the first, actually my first real scene on camera, you know, I come from theater, so I had no idea what I was doing, right? I just thought, okay, we all rehearsed this big dinner scene, actually, about five of us sat at the table. And uh, we rehearsed and I felt like uh, kind of nervous. I'm stepping into this big cast, this huge show. And they shoot, they shoot Fred first. They shoot him because he had to go to school after his <laughs> Right, of course. So they shot him out, and then they shoot everyone else out. And I'm last. And when I'm finally on camera, I'm acting across a piece of tape that they put <laughs> next to the camera box. And some older script supervisor kind of reading the lines. And I'm like, oh my God, this is my intro. I'm, I'm just acting with a piece of tape. Anyway, it was, it was baptism by fire, I guess, but you know. I think the other weird thing that happens is the first time uh, you're on uh, television, uh, my first time I was, uh, had a very small role in an episode of Spin City. Uh, people at home, they see you and they assume since you've been on network television that you have now made it and you have nothing but money. But the reality is like, as soon as I did that episode, I went back to my normal life. And I, I, the same happened for you, right? For sure. I mean, I was waiting tables for seven years um, during all these little gigs, you know, you're right. I mean, people think, wow, you're on TV, you made it. But I mean, the first time I actually saw myself on television on the Wonder Years, I was waiting table i was on my shift and one of my buddies another waiter you know pointed out to the television that we had over the bar at the bar area of the restaurant he said schwimmer you're on tv you know and i, turned, and I looked at like yeah and i turned back to my table and it's like uh, do you want blue cheese or thousand island <laughs> <laughs> it's very humbling uh it's a, uh, that's a good story. I hope that everybody who's, uh, who's trying to get into this business can uh, and hear that and be a little inspired by uh, how it ultimately turned out. Well, it also, I think it teaches you so much um, respect for anyone in the service industry for the rest of your life. I mean, if you've yes. ever waited tables as I did for seven years, first of all, you tip really well for the rest of your life <laughs> because Absolutely. you just know how much how much people rely on gratuity. And um, that's the only way I paid my bills, you know, for all those years, so. I also, I don't know if you feel this way, but I think there's this projection of how stressful show business can be. And it's not without its stresses, but the only stress dreams I ever have are ones about being a waiter. Like that is still, <laughs> that like table seven needs their burrito. Uh, that will wake me up in the middle of the night more than anything that ever happened. Well, I hope one that we can all of us can get back to restaurants soon, and two that we can all remember to over tip our wait staff. And yes. uh, congrats on the show. It's always so nice talking to you, David. Thanks, man. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate it.